Tonight I'm going to do a quick video on a couple different hold down techniques and how you can work with the Yeti Smart Bench if you don't want to have the upper beam rolling across your finished material. We're going to cut out a couple pieces basically of this shape. And what they're going to do um, is help support the, the Smart Bench if we're riding up above the material. I'm going to give you an example of, of why we would want to do that. When I carved both of these pieces, I didn't want the upper beam rolling across the material and knocking the bark off. So I did the, I, I raised it up by stacking different pieces of material underneath the wheel sets until I had it elevated so that the, the system was above my finished material. Then I clamped it down and let it roll resting on these stacks. So that's fine. I've got three-quarter material, I've got half-inch material, I've got quarter-inch material, I've got different sizes all stacked up there close to the smart bench. So that works well sometimes. One other way to do it though is to, if I need to do a full sheet, um, for instance when I carved this sign, I painted the MDF first and then carved it. So I didn't want it rolling up on top of it. So the other way I'm going to do it is to make a jig like this that will fit here at the end, at the ends of the, of the track I'll slide it in. I'm going to have to loosen the clamp here just a second. Sorry, can't do that with just one hand. So I'll, I'll slide this in, drop it down, and then lower the beam till it rests on. So the upper beam is resting on it here and here. And then it's also held at the cam clamp. So let me get the console out of the way. And zoom back out. So it'll be resting on it here on this and this beam and being held at the cam clamp. So that'll stop it from rocking. Um, it's not a big deal if you're cutting slow, but if you're trying to hog out a lot of material quickly and the X beam is moving back and forth, hogging things out when it stops, it does tend to pitch just a tiny bit. It, it's very small, uh, but you may not want it. So this will help eliminate this and then I can set up different thicknesses. Of, of, of rise here. I can have this one I've got set at five inches total height, uh, but I can, and, and this works well. It's going to be just a little bit high and proud of a half inch spool board, three quarter material. This will give us, it gives another eighth of an inch here. Um, so, I mean, you'll see that this is not being held down by the wheels any longer. Um, so I'll have a couple different heights of this, but the same basic bottom part of the, of the, of the jig. And then I can use those on both ends and we'll go to town. I'm using a uh, rather generic uh, eighth inch spiral O that I ordered uh, online. Ruhai uh, LYBtool.com and it's just a, an eighth inch spiral O with a half inch cutting diameter, uh, a half inch uh, cutting length and a quarter inch shank. Um, quality of cut I've got this program through a spire. Let me move till I get a good focus on it. That's uh, a total of three passes and then a .020 finishing cut. And it does a great job. Uh, you don't see any, you don't see the different passes. Um, the engraving looks good as well. Nice and clean. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I, I adjusted the, the, the size of it. I'm taking another roughly half inch off both ends and I'm going to hog this all the way out and just cut this out rather than have it the way I had it with just a, a small rabbit. You need the rabbit there because the console, when it plugs, when it goes into the stand, it's sticking out just a tab right here. So I'm going to, that's going to be all pocketed out. Um, so there's other videos on how to set up the machine. I've already Wi-Fi'd the job to it. I have oriented the machine to the center of the part, top of the material. I'm going to touch off the tool. I always orient the, uh, the machine uh, to the part level first so that when I touch off the tool, I don't have to wait for it because my tool was already down there so I could get to the crosshairs that I had, I had drawn there. It's hard to see in the blue because it's blue on blue. But I had drawn crosshairs on the center of the piece I'm using some sink cutoff ovals that I get for free from one of the shops that does commercial work around here. And um, so they stack these things up because they don't want to put them in the dumpster because they're expensive to carry away because of the weight. And I make a lot of different uh, products with them. 
so I've centered it up, centered it to the center of the piece. I have touched off the tools, and we're, so we should be good to go. Oh, I don't know whether I've loaded the job yet. Yes, Corian riser. I think this is going to be my final iteration. I've done a couple of them, just playing with it, and it's programmed at 100 inches per minute with a half inch um, ramp. And I've just have I can do two on it on these uh, 15 by 11 inch ovals, but I only have one programmed so I can see if I like it first. So I will t tap it and tell it to go. Get everything else out of the way. And off we go. I've got the dust shoot off and with the uh, with the dust extraction riding that high above it, it doesn't do as good a job picking up all the swarf as if it's riding close. So that's why you want to have multiple sizes of these risers for your materials. Of course, another option would be to use a four inch dust collector and modify the dust chute. I have a customer that, I have a customer that made this and he takes our dust chute off and puts this on behind the unit, connects two up, he has two smart benches, connects them to the, uh, a four inch dust collector, splits it, and, and runs like this. Now the disadvantage of the way he's done it is that he doesn't have the LED lights on any longer. I'm gonna try to modify one, and I will probably set one up with magnets or something so that I can flip this off or on from the front, it will be here and just have it add to it, basically. Add to the dust collector. And then drop it down from overhead. All kinds of variations. That's the beauty of the smart bench. This is a starting point and lets you do what you want for what's best for your shop. So right now we're pocketing out the area that this little, the tip of that console is going to fit in. And I'm going to pause the video. You, you, well, I'll, I'll pause the video. You get it, how it cuts. The idea is, let's make this thing yours. Here it's engraving the text. And again, the text is just, it looks nice, but it's not required, of course. But it is good to show the quality of cut. This is four so it's very dense. And we'll look at the quality of cut when we're done. Okay, it has finished the pocketing and the text, so now it's uh, running out the profile. Again, this will be multiple passes, it's three, and a, and a finish cut. Uh, programmed at 100 inches per minute. And I'll just let it run at program speed. Zoom out a bit so you can get a better idea. Hold down technique, I use the same thing I've often used and have shown before, the CA glue and painter's tape. Works great, it's quick, easy. And I can get two of these out of a single sink oval. And these sink ovals, I've, you know, again, they're stacked up and the guy says, hey, come get, come get them anytime you want. On the finish pass, I did not set it up to go the opposite direction. Sometimes I do. I think it's just taken off an additional 20 thousandths. So it got close. Uh, but that way if the bit is flexing, which it may be because it's such a thin bit, um, yeah, I can hear it cutting in the corners of the little of the tip. Um, so with speed and, and cutting faster, uh, the bit may be flexing. So the finish cut just cleans that out. And there she is, she's done. Shop back off, six minutes and 37 seconds, it says. It's rising up, Get it, let it move over. So I hit the console and jog it out of the way. Go fast and jog it. Grab a tool. Yeah, I'm doing this one-handed, sorry. The pry tool. And 
I'm using my left handed and I'm right handed. Okay, so good clean text, very clean, get out of the way so I can focus on it, very clean cut lines, you can't see the multiple passes with the finished cut done, and I'm going to have to unclamp this, and I can try it with one hand, nope, not going to work, okay, so I've raised it up, and then this will go in here like this, drop down and then I'll lower the beam onto it. Get the wheels so that wheel is in the way. I need to get that wheel out of the way. Sorry for the shaking camera. <laughs> okay, the wheel's out of the way. And then I'll put it down. And that's nice and secure. So I'll do the other one like it. What I want to do is make sure that the console can be plugged in and the machine can be jogged all the way home or toward, toward the console because I bumped the bars, I have to clear the error message. And that works fine. So I'll cut another one out of the same piece of material to use on the other end as well. And then I'll cut some that are taller so that um, they have different amounts of heights that they will elevate it above the, the bed of the machine. Because sometimes I use quarter inch spoil board, sometimes I use a half inch, sometimes I use three quarters, just whatever I have there on the throwaway rack. So uh, that looks good and I'll start the other one. I have to retool path it and send it to the machine. Okay, here's the quick file. Uh, I'm just gonna show it. Um, and I put notes on it so I um, I cut this area to be 1.77 wide, that's my first note, and I'm using an eighth inch bit. Uh, I, I drew it five inches from here to here uh, for a quarter inch spoil board plus three quarter material plus the gap above it. Uh, with that 1.77 as that middle value here for the middle bar, I needed a negative .02 allowance to have a nice tight fit but be able to slide it on easily. And what you need to do is check on the inside of that console, there's a grounding wire there. You want to make sure that's out of the way. You may need to rotate yours um, and check for any screws coming through the end brackets that stop it from coming through. Uh, but that's basically, that's it right there. Uh, so I would just capture the whole thing, control C, control V, and then just drag it up. Control Z, control Z. I'm just gonna undo all these. Didn't see what I did. Okay, so I've got it all copied, and then Control C, Control V, and there's my copy. All raised up. So I only want to machine this one this time. So I'll go through and just apply the tooling here, same same profiles and same cutouts as I did to the the copied version, and that's it. Very simple. But that's the beauty of the smart bench. It gives you a starting point, lets you modify it and tweak it to make it the best thing you can do for yourself. Okay, I've copied the tool pass over to the second one. I've recalculated everything. It all looks good. Gonna go through my material a bit. Yes, no problem. Uh, reset the preview, preview all. It's very quick. And again, typically I will set this up and do it for two of them in a whack, but I've already done the bottom one, so that's good. I saved it down. Uh, I'm going to select all the tool paths. They're all using the same one. Save it down. I called that uh, Corian riser, five inch with a 0 .25, 0 .125, and this was the final design. But this is just the second one, so I've already saved it. But I'll save it again. Uh, do you want to replace it? Yes. I'll open up FileZilla, and I want to hit the right button when it's on in the proper directory. Refresh it, and there's the Corian riser, five inch, 0 .125 tool, final design second one only and I'm going to drag it over here and it's there it's all transferred it's at the machine it's time to go cut again I dropped the beam back down on the on the riser that we had already took, took that one out um, I don't have to reorient my, my 
uh, material home, it's in the same spot. I don't have to retouch off my tool, it's the same tool. I just have to load the newer program. Uh, Corey and Riser 5 inch. This is the second one. Give it a second to read it. It's the final design, second one, yes. No thanks, I don't need to check it. I know it's good. I'm using Vectrix uh, output. And I'm good to go. It'll go to the center. As it drops down lower, it'll turn on the spindle. And go to town. Okay, so while I was uh, designing the other ones that would go a little taller, uh, this finished and pry uh, tool. So again, quality of cut, very nice. And uh, the pocket we just did quickly, didn't do any finishing passes on any of that because that's just not important. But you do want to see a good quality cut, so how will this work? I'm going to try not to shake it as much as I did last time. I move the console, I'm going to lift up on the cam clamp so that I have room to put it down. I'll, I'll put it in. Good fit, nice and tight. I will take the other one and go to the other side. By raising it up, I did bump the bars, so the emergency stop bars are triggered. That's why the red light is flashing. Open the cam clamp. Okay, I ran out of space, and so it cut out the last video. I had to move a bunch of videos off the phone. Uh, so I've taken the runners out, and the jig block is in. Uh, everything's move down on top of it. It's nice and tight. Same thing on the other side. And so now I'm going to go into Vectric software and split the drawing, add an inch, and then add another inch on top of that and have more done. I should be able to nest them uh, manually. I should be able to uh, take this lip and put it in here and get the height that I need most likely. If not, I'll just do one to a piece. Again, most shops that do commercial work, they have Corian or Wilson Art or any of the different brands, and they love to see them being used. Uh, the first thing I do after I uh, pick some up from somebody is I usually send them pizzas and uh, for the shop, and then I uh, can get all I want anytime I want. Uh, kill the error message because of the um, touching the... Oh, that's why. So remove the obstruction, clear the alarm, all is good. So hopefully that will give you some ideas, and um, it's, it's really, it, it is worth doing yourself. Uh, I have the drawing file the way I did it, but uh, all the machine, you know, the, the variations on what you have to do um, will be a little different depending on what materials you're cutting and things like that. So it gives you an idea of how, to, how I did it and how I started, and, and hopefully it will help you get on your way to, to make your own.